So which institutions and schools are we talking about here? Our four-year public schools, are these ones listed? Again, they're on our website and they're included in the packets and in the handouts. Our two years, again, community college, junior colleges, and our technical schools. One of the reasons why we specifically named and outlined which institutions we're talking about is because a lot of our students, particularly first generation, right, do not necessarily understand the difference between private nonprofit, private for profit, community, right, state school, Westwood College, and CU Boulder, and all these different myriads of institutions, right? So we want to provide them as much clarity as possible to say these are the institutions we're talking about. These are the colleges and universities that is going to be affected by ASSET. And then for them to go ahead and research and investigate which are the ones that they are interested in applying to and enrolling in. Right. If there are any further questions, uh, I actually want to make sure I didn't, is Stacey, if there's anything else you want to add on that part? I agree. So if there's any other questions, comments, concerns, this email address, colorado at gmail.com, will be forwarded directly to Stacy and I, and we will respond accordingly and timely. There's all of our flowcharts, our materials, requests for informational presentations is available on our website, coloradoasset.com. We have been taking uh, requests for uh, us to come in and speak directly to parents, directly to students. I'm available in Spanish, and just like I said, not all of our students and our families are Latino or Mexican, right, or Spanish speaking. If you've got a community of Vietnamese or in any other language, I will work with you to find an interpreter. I can't speak those multitude of different languages, but I will work with you to find something and a resource for those communities as well. And of course, the Department of Higher Ed for other questions related to asset and its implementation. So now if we, we would like to go ahead and open it up to questions, uh, I know you guys have been writing diligently, I see that on the note cards as well. Um, is there any questions right now that pop up? Okay, so let's go here and then here. Um, I have a few questions, I'll just give you the first one. Does, does a criminal offense impact asset eligibility? I know it affects DEC eligibility. Or I don't believe that criminal backgrounds have an effect on higher education admissions policies. Uh, we didn't touch that in the bill, so it would be whatever the policies were pre-asset. I'm does, not sure if institutions might have individual policies on that though. Does remediation coursework at the college level impact the student's ability in the asset process? So if they have to take a 99 level course, is that going to impact their funding? No, it shouldn't. It's still the same in-state rate. It might take them longer to graduate if they're taking those uh, classes lower than the 100 levels, but it shouldn't impact rate they pay. Last question. Um, you, you don't happen to know if COF applications are in Spanish, do you? No, they're in English. Just in English. And if, if, if students require a little bit more assistance with the COP application, the paper forms are downloadable instead of just you know asking students to fill it out on the computer um, so that you can kind of sit with them and show them the places that they need to mark the way that we indicated in our presentation. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I have a couple too. And since you did COP, I'll stay there. Um, we used to have students fill out the paper version of COP, but now it seems like with these new little check boxes, are, is the push now to have all students fill out the form, the COP form online, or still stick with the paper version? So I know that the online version uh, was launched right at, after the summer, um, and did have a few glitches and, and um, technical complications here and there. Um, I know that College Assist is, is trying to work through those, Right. Uh, as a precaution, it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and print off the paper one specifically for our asset students to ensure that they're filling it out accurately and correctly, and then going ahead and submitting the paper version. Okay. And I think it's more about resource saving yeah. and just ease yeah. of information transfer and all of that. But I don't. One's definitely not better than the other. It's just kind of the wave of technology. <laughs> right. Okay. And then in part of your presentation. Um, you were talking about DACA students and social security numbers. So is, is it better for them to put, at, put their, their temporary social security number on 
college applications or colleges now having a new category where students are going to check that they're an asset no. student because no. I can see that being problematic. No. no. And that's why we, we have this specific asterisk that says if this is a DACA social, do not put this. I'm, I'm talking on college that. applications as well. Yeah. I'm not talking uh, college. You know, I don't know how institutions would work with that. And we're, we've been encouraging students to leave their DACA social off of all of their college application paperwork until they are inside the institution and can talk to someone and really make sure that their number is being used in the appropriate way. It's not going to get funneled into anything that would cause some problems. I would strongly suggest asking that question directly to mm -hmm. the college and the institution. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Because I've heard a myriad of different responses yep. from the institutions themselves. Because then the kids are going to have to worry about yep. being classified out of state and then having to prove their their eligibility under asset. Um, Okay, what about students who graduated before 2013 and have already attended college, but were paying crazy, you know, out-of-state tuition rates? So as long as they have their three years Colorado High School, their diploma or GED, they have been admitted to whatever college they want to go to now, and can prove that 18 months physical residency, they're fine. They okay, can change just, their residency status. Okay, and as so, the institution, yeah. and that's what a lot of our institutions, like Metro, for instance, okay. has made a full-fledged effort mm -hmm. to go ahead and reach out to those students to notice to change their classification. Okay, so um, because it, you know, in that little handout it said and not attended, but it's just has not necessarily attended, but could have attended. Yeah. Okay, thank you. It's not everyone really kind of funnels into the same category, same requirements, same everything, even with all the different caveats. I'm trying to keep it simple. Oh, these are really good questions. Yeah. Is there anybody else um, who has questions related to the presentation? Or um, so at this point, then, if we don't have kind of general questions, are there any specific situations which you guys are dealing with right now or at this point, or could envision confronting in the recent future, near future? Um, that you might need assistance kind of thinking through. Great. Um, if there's a student who is just transferred in as a junior, so they'll only get two years of Colorado high school education, what programs can we try to convince Ascent. them to do? So what is Ascent? Ascent, Ascent is a uh, concurrent enrollment program, and it's Ascent or concurrent enrollment. There are other concurrent enrollment programs. And those are in district programs where students can begin to take their first two years of what they call guaranteed transfer pathway courses, where it's a set you know, number of basic courses that every school around Colorado for the first two years will accept. And so students can apply and be in the Ascent program or concurrent enrollment. Their transcript stays within the district. The district gets funding from the state to keep these students in district. And then that will count as an additional year on their transcript. And so when they present their transcript and they're applying to their college of choice, it will show that they have been enrolled for those three years. And that's, may, and that's gonna depend also on the programs that your high school has, yeah. mm -hmm. yep. right? I mean, we, we wanna name that, like any public policy, there's gonna be students that don't qualify. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know at our district, you must have at least 12 credits at that's CCA. In and order they to have qualify. to qualify for you know college ready scores. Right. So it's not just right. what your school can provide, but it's what your student is capable of producing. It's a lot of creative counseling, creativity yes. on the part of the advisors in working with these students and their situations to make sure they meet all these benchmarks. What if you have a student who, uh, say for example, went to school here in um, ninth and tenth grade, and then went returned to a country or that they were from or visited and then came back another year and had one more year. That, will that still okay. count? Yep. It doesn't have to be consecutive. Okay, consecutive. Nope. Six okay, good. semesters, however you can piece it together. Okay. Yeah. Had to create benchmarks, but trying to make them mm -hmm. in ways that students can have a lot of situations. Good. And CDHE has FAQs on their website. Yep. Uh, they are in your packet, but my guess is that they probably aren't the most current version because CDHE is updating this constantly as they are getting questions from the communities. 
Now, we strongly encourage you all to reach out either to us or directly to CDHE because the way that the FAQ is being updated is by feedback and questions from people who are on the ground right, working with students every day like you all. And so if you guys are able to direct those questions to CDHE, then they can go ahead and answer them and provide those answers uh, to everybody else via their website. So we strongly suggest even submitting those types of questions to CDHE. Well, we want to thank you all for coming out tonight, uh, this evening, beautiful Colorado evening. Uh, and if there's any other side questions that you'd like to ask us, again, our email is coloradoasset at gmail.com. We can kind of be here, too, to interact and to speak. If you'd like to request a presentation for your students, your parents, uh, or you know other faculty members in your school, please go through our website, and you'll get me.